Morena Fano. Um, so today is my day 14 and 15 of my 25 day mental health awareness challenge. Um, so yeah, I didn't do a video yesterday. I don't know why, I can't remember why. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to try and do cover two topics today. Um, and I'll try not to make them go for too long as, as best I can. Um, so just want to thank my bestie Darren for nominating me for this challenge. Um, and also just congratulate those who I have nominated for this challenge who um, are doing their thing. Um, my cousins Casey and Patty, your videos are awesome. Um, and I think that's it. Um, I haven't really been nominating anyone. Um, I've just sort of been put it, putting it out there that if you feel like um, you have anything to share or you want to contribute to this um, to this challenge, to um, to yeah, just jump jump on. Um, so, but yeah, the, I think I've nominated a couple of people. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about today um, is um, filling the void. Um, so um, for me, I guess it stemmed from ch childhood, as most of our things unfortunately do. Um, so I experienced a lot of um, issues where I was left alone when I was younger. Um, I was with my brother, but so it was just us two that was left that were left alone for most of the time. But um, I'm just going to speak for myself. So um, just so you know, I wasn't actually by myself. So um, yeah, it stems a lot from childhood. There are a lot of times when um, we were left to um, sort of like fend for ourselves. I remember one incident where um, my brother and I, or I, we were left at home um, and we woke up and there was no one there with us and so my brother and I were running through the neighbourhood screaming, yelling out and um, crying and um, we were only young. I think we would have been under five if if, or not very far from it and we were running up and down the neighborhood screaming out um, for our mother and um, and I remember our next door neighbor came out and she um, and you know she said to us um, I can't remember if she said shut up or be quiet but it was something like that and then she said get in here get in here like um, it was like an embarrassing thing and I remember that um, and so I think that we ended up going inside I, I can't remember exactly what happened but I remember um, that particular reaction of it and so from there I sort of um, sort of felt a little bit like okay you can't you can't talk about these things Corey you can't show any kind of emotion or anything like that um, that was one example um, of abandonment issues is what it is. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stop tripping around the word. Um, um, there were um, lots of instances, and I know this happens. For, would have happened for a lot of kids, but there were a lot of instances where I'd wake up and I'd come downstairs, and there are strange men all over our lounge. Um, strange men all over my mother. Um, you know, drunk. You have passed out from being drunk, lying on our couches. And I'm sort of sitting there on, you know, on a small part of the couch that I can find and um, waiting for someone to wake up and make me something to eat. Um, and um, I sort of, that never happened. And so I either went hungry or um, most of the times I just went hungry. Um, there were times when... Uh, the people that I really loved and trusted left me um, during my teenage years um, at a time where, you know, I really needed some guidance and stuff. Um, and I was left left alone um, to fend for myself, not only for myself, but for my brother as well. And so I had to take on that responsibility at an early age um, to look after my brother. I barely knew how to look after myself, let alone look after my brother. Um and that was the time that both him and I got quite close. Um, 
well, we had to because we had no one else to rely on. Um, and, um, yeah, there have just been a few instances like that where, um, where I've just felt, um, yeah, that people have left, have left me. Um, so, um, some, some things for me that I've come out of that, that I try to do to fill the void that I've, um, got because I felt, I felt like I've, I was abandoned, um, as a child and as an adult sometimes um, some of the things that I used to do was I used to people please all the time um, especially my family um, you know I used to do things like when I was younger um, if someone in my family would say oh it would be cool to have this and I would buy it purely so that they would hopefully um, you know love me and um, or accept me. Um, I, I really, never really wanted it, but you know, I thought, oh, okay, this this could be in for me, um, and so I would do stuff like that to that extent. To pe people please, um, I would. Um, what else would I do to try and fill that void? Um, I was brought. I wasn't brought up with my dad. I um, mean, so for many, many years, um, I, um, I wrote, wrote him a letter. So I actually found my dad in the register records, the voting records, whatever they're called. And I found him there when I was quite young, actually. And I sent him, the first letter I ever sent him was a Father's Day card. Um, and then over the years, I sent him more cards and I sent him photos of me. And then he sent me some photos of himself and my brothers and sisters, which is really, really cool. And so when I got old, older, um, because I tried all these different things to try to fill the void, I thought maybe that's what it is. Maybe I need to find my dad. Um, and so I did. I found my dad and I met my brothers and sisters and I've met some of my aunties and uncles and some of my, some of my other family. And it's really, really awesome. It definitely helps me connect some of the dots in terms of why I behave and react to things differently to what my my mother's family um, different to how they react and behave to things um, and um, it was a really re really awesome thing but that wasn't the thing that filled the void either for me um, and then um, ever since I can remember my family not all my family but some of my family have like pressured me into um, having kids um, and even one incident my granddad said to me while him and I were driving we were on a long drive going I think from Wellington to somewhere we were on a drive and he um, I was driving and he was in the passenger seat and he looked at me and he said babe um, I need to tell you something and I thought it was quite serious and then he said to me I think that you need to freeze your eggs <laughs> and I mean, that's how open my granddad and I's my relationship is, but it sort of threw me back. Um, and I was, I didn't know how to answer it, to be honest, but um, it was, it made me start to think that, oh, okay, maybe, you know, if granddad really thinks that I should start having kids, maybe I should, maybe that's what's missing in my life, is that I don't have someone like that to love unconditionally, and, um, you know, maybe that's, Maybe that's gonna make me make me all make me better, um, but um, if I did do that and it didn't fill the void, um, then I I don't think it would be fair of me to have this child that I'd not necessarily um, brought into this world for the right reasons, and so that's why I haven't had had any kids yet. Um, and you know, I don't know if it's necessarily on the cards for me either, but you know, that's that's something that I've sort of, you know, ticked off the list. I don't think that's gonna be it at the moment. So I've still been, I've spent most of my life still trying to find what that is, what that void is. Um, I've tried many different things. I've met many different people, um, and you know, I just still can't find what that, what that, what that filler is. Um, until recently, um, I've discovered myself, 
I've discovered my worth. I've discovered my awareness. I've discovered what a good person I actually am. Um, I've discovered um, that, you know, it's actually okay for people to um, not accept you as you are because you know, because I know I'm a good person. Um, I know I treat people with, with as much respect as I can give and as much as they deserve. Um, and, you know, compared to a lot of bad people in this world and, and things that I see that people do to each other, I don't do any of that stuff. And that um, has really, really helped actually fill up a huge part of the void that um, has been created for me throughout my life and um, I think that's really awesome because all this time I've been trying to find that fella externally when actually it's been internal that that void um, which makes complete sense right the void is inside so it makes makes sense to me that whatever will fix fix that will fill that void will come from the inside but you know when you're going through depression and anxiety that's not the kind of stuff you think about you don't think like you think that you've got the problem so for me I thought okay I've got the problem there's nothing I can possibly do to fix it someone else has got to fix it surely someone else has got the answer for me um but yeah I found out over the over especially the last year that that's not the case I have all the answers that I need inside me I just need to have the courage and the strength to look within myself to find those answers and I've never felt like this in my life before and so it's really put a new outlook on the world and it's put a new outlook on how I see and treat people um it's just a little bit more different. For me, it's a little bit more genuine. Um, not that it wasn't before, but I really own it now. I really own my relationships. And uh, I'm really, really lucky that I know and have the people um, that I do in my life. And so, um, yeah, that's how I filled my void. Is um, I stopped looking on the outside and I started looking on the inside. And it honestly is... I can't explain it to you how how it um how it feels but it's the best feeling and I really do feel like I'm on top of the world and I feel so empowered and I feel like no one can touch me um and you know I'm not rich and I don't have kids and I don't have a big flash car and I don't have a big flash, big flash house but I'm happy I'm happy I'm, I'm so glad that I've managed to reach this point now um I wish it happened earlier, but it hasn't. Um, but, you know, there's obviously a reason for that because I had to go through all these things in my life to make me the person that I am today. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, pretty proud of that fact. Um, so that's my day 14. Day 15, real quick, because I don't want this to go too long. Um, but I just want to talk about um, being introverted. Um, so I guess because of the abandonment issues that I had when I was younger... Um, and um, just always not feeling accepted um, in spaces that I thought were safe um, around people that I thought loved me. And, um, I I just sort of withdrew into myself as people do when they go through those situations when you can't explain what's going on around you but you can feel it. You can feel that something's not right and for some reason you are always at the centre of it. And so I... Um, introverted into myself and for me that was the safest place to be um, and it still is these days um, although I don't do it as often as I used to but um, so for me when um, when it all gets a bit too much um, I need to be by myself I need to um, not hear or see anything else but myself um, because everything else when I'm in that state just triggers me and I can't handle it and I don't know what to do um, and the only reaction I have most times is that I just sort of um, re over overreact and um, just sort of, what's the word? Like snap at people, that's what it is. And I hate that because I'm not that kind of person. I'm not really a snapper. But um, when I'm in that state, when I need to have my time, that's what I do. That's And it's um, it's ugly. I don't, I don't like it. Um, I think one particular experience that um, has sort of, it's, it's like a recurring experience, um, but when I was younger I always used to get extra spoiled by my auntie, um, and you know, I didn't know why, 
I don't know why she did that to me, and I still don't really, st- still don't really know why. Um, but I was always thankful for it because she used to give me things that I never got at home. Um, and you know, I was always super grateful for for what she did to me, and so she was. She was like my favorite auntie growing up. Um, but then, um, and I never thought anything of it. I just thought, okay. Um, you know, just and, and that never happened all the time from what I I can remember. It never happened all the time, but it um did happen on the on occasion. So um and so I always grew up thinking, you know, she's my favourite auntie because she used to always used to look after me and um and that, you know, that was cool. But as I as I grew up I had a conversation with my cousins, um and they told me that they hated me for that. Um and I didn't know why it wasn't my fault. It was well, I never asked for anything. She always just gave it to me, and um, and so when my cousin said that to me, I don't know if they were joking or what. But um, and so I asked again. Really, you hated me? Um, yeah. And their reply was like, Yeah, yeah, we did. And I was like, Wow, I did. I never. I didn't have any control over that. It's actually not my fault. And so. Um, that particular experience um, just made me think, okay, that's it. I can't, I really don't have anybody. Um, and it was, um, I don't think about that so often these days, but I still think that's, because that's a really harsh word, eh, when you say you hate somebody. Um, and to hear that from people that you love um, and that who you thought loved you um, is a, it's an interesting thing. It does interesting things to you. So, um, so from from that, I just pulled right away, um, and I withdrew into myself, and um, just sort of pulled myself away from the world because, you know, if people that you love hate you, then what's to say that strangers don't hate you? Um, and this is just stuff that goes in your head, eh? When you're going through like depression and anxiety, you just start things just start making themselves up in your head, and you just can't put any sense or any logic to it. Um, so that was one experience that um, sort of sticks with me about why um, why I do that, why I, or why I was drawn to myself. Um, but the way that I've got through that, surprisingly enough, um, as introverted as I am. Um, I found this little thing um, called Zumba and um, I just love, because I've always loved to dance, I'm not a professional dancer or anything, but I've always just loved to move and I've always loved music and when I found the two can be put together as well as keep you healthy and, um, and you know, improve your well-being, it was just seemed to be all like a whole bunch of pluses for me, so I um, did that for a few years and then I became an instructor. And so when you're a Zumba instructor, um, it's quite an extroverted role. Um, And so um, it can be quite uh, conflicting for me because I can do my Zumba and I'm a completely different person when I do it. But as soon as I'm finished, um, I revert back to my quiet, shy self. Um, And so many people have said to me, I can't believe that you're a Zumba instructor. None of the Zumba instructors that I know are like you, <laughs> and I'm I'm just like wow, you know. At first I thought, oh, well, I, I took not a, not offence, but I was a little bit like, oh, okay, stink. But now I'm like, oh, thanks, thank you. That's that's awesome. Um, I really embrace it and really accept it because you know I am the person I am, and that's just just the way it is. Um, and so that's what I did. I found my passion. That's what I did to get through my. Um, being an introvert I found my passion um, I love it I love instructing I love dancing with people I love just seeing people's smiles I love the energy that I get from people um, I love the instructors that I meet and like the support that you get from the, the instructors that you meet um, I just really really love being part of this particular this particular part of my journey and it's and it's really awesome for me and it really has pulled me out of my shell for most most part um but yeah so i just wanted to leave those with you i hope they help you just remember it's okay to not be okay um you know uh if if you ever need someone to call it all with i'm always here i'm i've got a good i've got a good ear and i won't give you any advice unless you ask me for it 
um but yeah um i hope that's helped um look after each other look after yourself most of all and i will see you on my next video